Hello everyone, my name is Chloe and today I am here with a brand new video. Welcome to Brunette Bibliophile where I post bookish videos and writing content. Today I am here to talk about the insane 17 items that I read during the month of March. I read so much in March that I read more than January and February combined. Now I read a large variety of things. I read some long books, some re regular size books, some novellas, and I believe a children's book. So we are going to discuss everything, but I am also going to go just a little quickly through a couple of things because this is going to be a really long video. So let's waste no more time and we're going to go ahead and get started. So I actually read the majority of this book in February, but the first one that I completed was The Davenports by Crystal Marquise. I received this arc from Yalfest, and I want to thank Yalfest and the publisher for giving everyone an opportunity to get this book. Unfortunately with this book I am settling on a three star rating and after reading a couple of other reviews I think the common denominator is everybody compared this to a Bridgerton style book with a black cast. I'm not going to read my entire review of this book but I will link it in the description below. Ultimately that is true to an extent. There is a season, there is romance, and there are marriage proposals but it is not just that. Because the year is 1910 there is a lot of discussion of civil rights which I think is a great discussion to have in this book. And I really like that this discussion is happening while we're also focusing on a black wealthy family. Ultimately I think that having four main characters all having their own storylines and romance was a bit hard to keep up with in addition to the romance was just a little bit boring for me. I definitely think this book has potential. The audience is there for it. It did end on a cliffhanger though, so it's definitely set up for a series and I haven't decided if I'm going to continue on with it or not. So unfortunately for me this was a three star read, but I really hope that this book does find its audience. Next I picked up a memoir and it is always surprising when I pick up a memoir, um, but I read Beyond the Wand, The Magic and Mayhem of Growing Up a Wizard by Tom Felton. So before I talk about this book I do want to mention some content warnings mostly focused around the content warnings for Harry Potter, discussion of the author, book, and movie series, and also trigger warnings for substance abuse. I am mentioning all of those trigger warnings because Tom Felton played Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter franchise. So a lot of this discussed is his time being an actor, which for the majority of his childhood, if not all of it, was being in the Harry Potter series. I did listen to the audiobook. That is my preferred way to read memoirs because the author tends to narrate them. And I enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. For me this one was not very um, drastic or revealing like some other memoirs that I've read are, but I did still really enjoy it. And that's pretty much all I have to say on it. Next I read a book recommended to me by my friend and co-worker and it was called Hen Fever, A Sapphic Romance by Olivia Waite. This is a novella that she gifted me on Kindle and it's basically a Victorian era romance following these two women that meet and we are set in a town that has an obsession with this like chicken contest that happens every year. I'm not going to talk too much about this one. I gave it two stars. It's a quirky read. The best characters were honestly the chickens, but for only being 100 pages it went way too slow for me and I just wasn't invested in the story. But the ending was nice. So that was an adventure. Next I reread a book with a friend of mine and it is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. We decided to reread this book well for me it was a reread. I don't think it was a reread for her. But we decided to read this book because the movie is actually coming out in the beginning of April and it had been a while since I'd read this book so I definitely wanted a refresher before watching the movie. And I gave this one four stars. I don't really have much to say about it but I'm very excited to see the film. Next another reread that I picked up was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. My work friend group and I were rereading this series with the graphic audio versions of the audiobooks where the tagline is there a movie in your mind. 
and this was such a completely different reading experience for me than the first time I read it. I think we are all familiar with my history with this book where I read it originally in 2017 and I did not like this book at all. I either gave it a two or a three at the time, but this reading experience was so much better than the first time around and I'm actually upping my rating to four stars. I had a completely different reading experience and I highly recommend checking out these versions of the audiobooks. If your library participates in Hoopla, that is how I was able to use that version of the audiobook. It is a dramatized adaptation and I highly recommend it. I am just so glad that I had a redeeming reading experience with this book. Next we're going to talk about one of the weirdest things that I read this month. And we're completely blaming TikTok for it because that is where I found out about this novella. It is called Get In My Swamp by G.M. Fairy. This is a loose retelling of Shrek and it's a romance erotica. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Let me start with I did not rate this book because I recognize that it is so bad. But one of my favorite reviews that I read of this, the one line that is my favorite out of this entire review is that this is simultaneously too much Shrek and not enough Shrek at the same time. Donkey is a centaur and is also a piece of shit. Lord Farquaad becomes Lawrence Fark and I find that to be hilarious. Why did I read this? Well, <laughs> Shrek is my favorite movie. So obviously I had to ruin it somehow. No. I don't know. It just I felt like I had to. I don't have anything to say about this book because it's just I recognize how bad it was. But if you are oddly interested in it like me, check it out. Next I read The Wicked Ones by Robin Benway. This is the first in what is supposed to be a series from Disney books. I don't know if Robin Benway is going to be writing all of them, but this is a story kind of set before the events of Cinderella. Actually, for sure, it is set before the events of Cinderella. We are following the two ugly stepsisters, Drizella and Anastasia. This book explores these characters before they became the people we knew them in the film. And it was pretty good. I rated this book four stars. I always like getting a lot of background information on these characters because we don't know too much about them prior to the events of the film. So I'm very interested to see what the Dark Ascension series is going to be all about, see different characters that we're going to be following, and also maybe if it's going to be similar to the Twisted Tales where different authors write each of the books. Next I read Shrek the little golden book version. Just because I really love Shrek and when I found out there was a golden book I knew I had to read it. Even though it's meant for children it's adorable. I think it perfectly summarizes the film into a little children's book and five stars. Next I picked up Guru by RuPaul. This is a fun little book of various philosophies of life and living from RuPaul throughout the years. It's not necessarily a memoir, it's mostly just short paragraphs on their different life philosophies. It was something fun to read. It has a lot of really good pictures both in and out of drag and throughout the years as well and overall I enjoyed it. I did not rate this book just because I didn't know what kind of rating I would give it, but I think it's definitely something interesting, especially as a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race it was great to kind of get these little inside philosophies. Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is the latest book in her Renaissance Fair romance series and this time we are following Lulu who we met in the previous book and Dex who we met a couple of books ago. This book was really good. I enjoy this series a lot. I do like that Lulu kind of took some time to reflect and find herself in this new life that she's found herself in. She actually found an interest in tarot which I thought was very interesting because I don't see that a lot in any contemporary modern characters that I read about so I thought that was great and it's actually kind of has me wanting to look more into tarot cards. I used to be into them 
when I was in middle school and I kind of fell out of that. So definitely something I want to look more into. I have no idea if this is supposed to be the last book in the series or not. I really hope it's not. I want to follow some new characters. I just love this series so much and I really hope that Jen DeLuca continues to write in this series. I gave this one four stars. Next I read A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. Again, my friend group and I are using the dramatized adaptations and this one also kind of got a little bump in rating for me. I believe I originally rated it three and a half stars and this time I also rated it a four star as well. It has been so long since I've read these books that it is like a, it's like I've never read them before which is amazing because it's basically like I'm reading them for the first time again. I'm surprised by some things that happened that I didn't remember and I'm just so happy that I'm having such a better experience with this series. Not too much to say besides that, four stars and get ready because spoiler alert we finished almost the entire series within March. The next book I read based off of a recommendation from my work friend was Read Between the Lines by Rachel Lacey. Now I was reading this book during a weekend reading vlog that I posted a couple of weeks ago so I will link that video in the description below if you want to hear some of my thoughts as I'm reading the book. But overall I gave this book four stars. This is following a bookstore owner and an author slash property developer and it is an enemies to lovers. I really like reading books featuring authors and writers because you do sometimes get an inside look at their process which I think could be fairly authentic considering authors are writing these author characters. So I definitely think that is interesting. This is also the first in a companion series. I will be reading the next book because it does fit one of my reading challenges and overall I enjoyed it and Rachel Lacey might be somebody that I will look more into different books that they have written. Next I read the Booktube Chicks book club pick for the month of March which was Cinder and Glass by Melissa De La Cruz. This is another Cinderella retelling that I read this month and I gave this one five stars. I'm gonna leave the link to our live show in the description below so you can hear more of my thoughts but I really enjoyed this book. I think it was such an interesting take on the Cinderella story set in not a modern world but we're gonna call it a non-fantasy world and I'm so excited for the next retelling that Melissa De La Cruz is releasing. Check out our live show in the description below. You're gonna get more of my thoughts, Desiree from Libri Labra's thoughts, and Kathleen from For the Love of Books thoughts. Another reread this month I read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. The second book by her that I read this month. This is also the second time that I've read this book and I read it so I could watch the TV show with a fresh um, remembering of the book. I read this book I believe also back in 2017 or 2018 and at the time I think I gave it four stars. This time around I also gave it four stars. I think I had a little bit of a better reading experience this time around because I remember the first time it being rushed because we read it for book club. But I'm so glad that I reread this again. I highly recommend the audiobook because even though this book is written in the form of a transcript there is a full cast that narrates it and I really love the person who narrates Daisy Jones's voice. Trigger warning for this book there is a lot of drug use. It does take part in the 70s for a good portion of the book so there is a lot of heavy drug use amongst characters and something that I really like about Daisy's narrator is that her voice is very deep and and not scratchy necessarily but it definitely sounds like she was doing drugs and smoking for a while which is something that is not reflected in the TV show but that's okay because this is an audiobook narrator versus an actor. I've also already completed the TV show and even though there are slight differences I think it is a really good faithful adaptation and I enjoyed both of them. All right we're gonna talk about my last two rereads for the month um, because I did almost finish the Akatar series this month. Let's talk about A Court of Wings and Ruin first. This one is the third in the main series. I think if you're familiar with the Akatar series you know this kind of weird split. So this is the last one that follows Reese and Feyre primarily and this one I gave four stars although I do think it is the most boring out of all of the three. There's a lot of war in this. We're reaching the climax of the main three books. If you know the series you know what I'm talking about. But again dramatized adaptations for audiobooks are incredible and I highly recommend it. And then we immediately picked up A Court of Frost and Starlight which is the novella that bridges 
the first three books with the next three books. A lot of my friends were saying that this is pretty boring. I do understand that there is a lot of info dumping with various characters, but I also really enjoy this one. This one I gave five stars, honestly. So the only one left that we have to read is A Court of Silver Flames, which the graphic audiobook is not out yet. So we are taking a little break before we continue on. But I'm so glad that we decided to do this and that I had such a better reading experience with the entire series as a whole this time around. And the final book that I finished right before filming this video, because as I'm filming this, it is March 31st, and this video is going out tomorrow on April 1st, I completed Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. I picked up this book for the buzzword challenge. This month the buzzword is secret, so this is what I was able to read. I'm not sure how I feel about this book. I'm giving it three stars. I have had some Tessa Bailey books that I have enjoyed and some that I've been kind of eh on, and this one I think think I'm gonna be kind of eh on. Let me start with the thing that I liked. The smut in this book is great. I'm not even gonna lie about it. I enjoyed it. But I'm not sure how I feel about these two characters, particularly the main male character Julian. I don't think it is outright said, but I think he does have some form of PTSD potentially that formed maybe into OCD. He is very very um, strict about his to-do lists. And it's almost to where he's not necessarily a 2D character, but he's very boring. But it is explained a little bit later on about a trauma that happened to him um, years prior. And I think that does kind of explain some of his uh, personality quirks. And I am going to mention a spoiler for a moment. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I recommend skipping ahead. I will have a little spoiler note right here. And when that's gone, there's no more spoilers. Kind of almost towards the end, but not completely at the end. It is mentioned that our main character Hallie is a virgin. And I'm not sure I believe that because it kind of came completely out of left field, in my opinion. That's not to say that it's a bad thing to be a virgin, but it just it was like it was just dropped out of nowhere and it didn't really feel believable to me. And then after that was mentioned it did make a little bit of the sex and some of the things that were exchanged uh kind of weird and I'm not sure how I feel about that. But uh yeah. So there is going to be a second book. It comes out later this year. I think I am going to read it but I'm settling on a three star for this book. I think with Tessa Bailey I can go either way because this is I believe the fourth book that I've read by her and you know I enjoyed two of her books and I'm kind of eh on two of her other books so I'm all over the place with this series. So that is all 17 items that I read during the month of March. I don't know what happened. I just read so much and I'm so proud of myself. I do have a lot of various reading challenges that I'm working on so I think that is kind of motivating me now that I have all of this free time but that is everything that I read this month. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, if you like what you see here, please go ahead and click subscribe. I post new videos every week. So click subscribe so you can be updated for when I post those. And in the comments, leave an emoji so that I know that you watched this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. In the darkness, I don't feel so cold. Somehow we're okay Our story drifts between shadows and smoke